Hello drone friends, this is Alan at UAV Coach and Drone Pilot Ground School. Happy Friday morning, welcome to our Drone Weekly News Roundup. It was so great being at the Commercial UAV Expo in Las Vegas last week. Their entire team just puts on such a great show. Um, this year I really enjoyed one of the keynote panels on drone delivery. Uh, you had folks from uh, uh, Amazon Prime Air, Matternet, Wing, and DroneUp. Uh, all talking about their different drone delivery operations, what their big challenges are, um, how they're operating amongst the existing regulations. A really interesting discussion. Um, I also enjoyed a panel on confined space inspections uh, using LiDAR drones that was moderated by a uh, longtime writer and marketer for us here at UAV Coach, Zach Dukowitz. He's also the Senior Communications Manager at Flyability. And um, wow, it was really cool to learn about some of Flyability's customers and how they're using the Elios 3 and LiDAR sensors. So you have this one guy at the Department of Energy talking about how these drones are being used to help move nuclear waste from an older facility to a more updated and secure one, uh, how the drones can handle a bit of radiation and uh, get a really cool look inside an area that hasn't been mapped or really seen by anyone for many, many years. Um, you, you also had the largest agriculture company in the world, this guy talking about using these uh, drones to inspect their grain silos. Uh, and then another guy talking about ore extraction, like there was this one particular situation where this this chute in this mine was jammed, operations had to be shut down, uh, and drones could have saved months and months of time when it came to diagnosing where the jam was, what it looked like. Um, anyways, maybe super boring information, perhaps I've lost a few of you here, but really enjoyed the conference this year. I'm pretty sure this is the largest expo hall of any commercial drone show that I've seen. I got to see a lot of industry friends and partners. Uh, many of these relationships date back to the first drone conference I went to uh, back in 2015. So shout out to our friends at uh, Propeller Aero, a drone mapping software company. I also got to meet Josh and Iran at AirData, a really cool flight data management platform uh, worth checking out, airdata.com. Uh, many other friends, uh, uh, Skip at Hollywood Drones, Mike Pahel, Tony at Drone Cadets, um, uh, Dan and Enterprise UAS, David at Drone Launch Academy, folks from the FAA, uh, Zach and his team at Flyability. I know I'm missing a bunch of folks. Uh, but most importantly, it was the first time our remote team was all in one place. Uh, we're in Tennessee, Wisconsin, Ohio, Arkansas. We do a lot of video chatting and messaging, but hanging out in person is a lot more fun. Um, we also had five of our UAV coach uh, flight training instructors join us uh, for the conference and for a big team dinner. So it was just so great meeting them and some of their partners and getting to learn more about what they do when they're not training uh, for us. So things like vertical structure inspections, real estate marketing, roof inspections for insurance, uh, construction site mapping, uh, working with the Civil Air Patrol, uh, some really cool stuff there. So anyways, thank you for indulging me. Uh, it was a really fun week, but uh, let's get to the news. Today, the FAA's remote ID requirements for drone manufacturers goes into effect. Here's what that means. Uh, drone companies, manufacturers like uh, DJI, Autel, Skydio, etc., they all have to start being in compliant with the FAA's new remote ID rules, and each model drone needs to be individually certified. One year from today, so September 16th, 2023, us drone pilots will all need to be flying remote ID compliant drones. So the drone manufacturers have one year to comply and then us pilots have to start complying. What's interesting is that on the FAA's uh, UAS Declaration of Compliance website, we're already starting to see that specific models are being approved and added to this list. I imagine over the next several uh, weeks and months, we'll see a lot more models and companies represented on this list, but uh, exciting that while the rules were all signed off on uh, many moons ago, uh, today we're starting to see real steps forward on remote ID. Next, check out this video from Stefan Kushout. He thinks the DJI Avada is so immersive that it feels like he's actually flying through the air himself. To illustrate this, he made this fun video in which he straps the Avada to his head uh, and pretends to uh, fly across a variety of beautiful landscapes. We'll link to the full video below in the description. I just love how creative it is. It's fun to see more videos coming out of people using the Avada. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've gotten your hands on one yet. Okay, lastly, last week at Commercial UAV Expo, Teledyne Fleer launched a new drone called the Cyrus. Cyrus is a commercial drone that comes with a dual thermal visual payload. This allows uh, users to add visible light outlines to thermal imagery to provide critical information uh, in real time. The drone has front collision avoidance, a 31 minute flight time, and no restrictive geofencing. Uh, at $9,695, it's priced to compete directly for public safety and other commercial markets with DJI's Matrice 300 RTK, which starts around 13 grand. Uh, it will be interesting to check in with uh, public safety agencies over the coming months to see if the Cyrus is a viable contender, certainly keeping our eyes uh, and ears peeled. 
All right, folks, that's all we have for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the latest drone industry news. Remember to check out the links below uh, to read more information about any of these stories. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching and to all of you drone pilots out there, wishing you blue skies and safe flying.